While the Russian Oscar II class submarine, a leviathan born from the anxieties of the Cold War, is often portrayed as a menacing titan of the deep, a more thorough analysis reveals it to be a relic of a bygone era, a brute force solution to a strategic problem that American naval power has long since evolved beyond. Conceived by the Soviet Union with the singular, almost obsessive purpose of countering the unrivaled might of the United States Navy's carrier strike groups, the Oscar II was a testament to the sheer resources Moscow was willing to expend to challenge American dominance. At the time of their introduction, their immense size and massive missile payload were indeed imposing. However, these submarines represent a strategic dead end, a class of vessel whose core concept has been rendered increasingly obsolete by decades of American technological advancement, superior operational doctrine, and the inherent, systemic weaknesses that have consistently plagued the Russian fleet. The fundamental premise of the Oscar II, a slow, ponderous submarine launching a massive salvo of large, fast, but ultimately unsophisticated cruise missiles, was a gamble against the formidable, multi-layered defense network of a U.S. carrier strike group. Even in the late Cold War, this was a difficult proposition, today, it borders on suicidal. An American carrier strike group is not a single target but a coordinated fortress at sea. The Oscar II's attack would first have to contend with a screen of vigilant U.S. hunter-killer submarines, such as the Virginia and Seawolf classes, which are acoustically superior, faster, and more agile, designed specifically to detect and neutralize such threats long before they can get into firing position. Should an Oscar II manage to launch its missiles, the incoming volley would face an almost impenetrable wall of integrated defenses. The E-2 Hawkeye airborne early warning aircraft, flying high above the fleet, would detect the missiles moments after launch, queuing the entire network. Aegis-equipped cruisers and destroyers would then engage with a barrage of standard missiles, capable of intercepting threats at long range and high altitudes. Anything that survives this outer layer is then met by the evolved Sea Sparrow ASIL for medium-range defense, and finally, the Phalanx CIWS, a last-ditch Gatling gun that fires thousands of rounds per minute to shred any leakers. The Oscar II's primary weapon, the P-700 Granite, is a relic of 1970s, technology, and its planned replacements, while more modern, face a defensive system that has been continuously upgraded and perfected for half a century to defeat exactly these kinds of saturation attacks. The operational history of the Oscar II class is not one of celebrated victories but is indelibly stained by the catastrophic loss of the K-141 Kursk in August 2000. This tragedy was not merely an accident but a profound indictment of the Russian Navy's culture of poor maintenance, lax safety standards, and disastrous leadership. The initial explosion, caused by a faulty practice torpedo, and the subsequent detonation that tore the submarine apart, highlighted a level of systemic failure that stands in stark contrast to the professionalism and rigorous safety protocols of the U.S. submarine force. The ensuing botched rescue effort, where political pride took precedence over the lives of sailors, further exposed a navy in disarray. This event shattered the myth of the invincible Russian submarine and confirmed for Western observers that despite their impressive specifications on paper, these vessels were operated and maintained under a system fraught with deep-seated problems. Faced with the inability to fund and construct a true modern replacement for these aging hulls, Russia has embarked on a troubled modernization program, Project 949 AM. This effort is essentially a life support measure, an attempt to cram new missile systems into Cold War-era platforms. The program's goal of tripling the missile capacity is ambitious, but it has been beset by the chronic delays, funding shortages, and industrial bottlenecks that characterize Russia's contemporary defense sector. Submarines have languished in shipyards for years beyond their scheduled completion dates, a clear sign of a struggling industrial base that cannot keep pace with American naval construction. This is not the action of a peer competitor, but of a power attempting to patch up an aging fleet on a shoestring budget, hoping to present a veneer of modernized capability. Perhaps the most telling evolution of the Oscar II design is the K-329 Belgorod, a highly specialized and modified hull that now serves as the launch platform for the Poseidon Doomsday Torpedo. While often hyped as a superweapon, the Poseidon is, in reality, a weapon of strategic desperation. It is an indiscriminate, apocalyptic terror weapon designed to attack civilian population centers, creating radioactive tsunamis. The very existence of such a weapon is a tacit admission by Russia that it cannot compete with the United States Navy in a conventional conflict. Unable to reliably defeat a carrier strike group at sea or contest American control of the oceans, Russia has been forced to develop a weapon of last resort that holds its own population hostage to a retaliatory nuclear strike. 
This is not a sign of strength it is a strategic bluff from a position of profound conventional weakness, a stark contrast to the American focus on precision, conventional deterrence, and maintaining a military that can win a conflict without resorting to the nuclear annihilation of cities. The Oscar II class and its derivatives, while still a dangerous component of Russia's navy, are a fading threat from a declining power. They are large, loud, and built for a singular purpose that has been systematically countered by decades of superior American technology and strategy. They are plagued by a history of poor maintenance and catastrophic failure, and their modernization is slow and uncertain. Their ultimate evolution into a carrier of a terror weapon only underscores their irrelevance in a conventional naval fight. The United States Navy, with its global reach, technological superiority, and robust, multi-layered defenses, has moved on, securing its position as the world's undisputed maritime power, leaving these Cold War leviathans in its strategic wake.